Hello and welcome to Cupcake Addiction's Giant Cupcake Basics Part 2 Tutorial. For those of you that were with us in Part 1, you've already learned how to make your giant cupcake patty pan or cupcake case. Now we're moving on to Lesson 2, which we will learn how to fill, how to bake and also how to extract our giant cupcake from the giant cupcake case. Tools and equipment that I have here today I have a giant silicone, so a flexible patty pan or cupcake case. You can also use one of the stainless non-stick. I prefer the, uh, the silicone, I just find the cupcakes a little bit easier to get out of the silicone cases. I also have a large spoon, a spatula, I have some non-stick cooking spray. If you don't have any cooking spray you can use butter to grease your pan, otherwise some Crisco or the equivalent. I've pre-made enough chocolate cupcake batter to make 24 cupcakes. This should be enough to fill my pan. And I also have just a standard non-stick baking tray. All right, let's get started. First up, we're going to grease our cupcake case. I'm going to take my spray, give it a good shake up, and I'm going to give that case a nice coating of non-stick spray. Being sure to get right around the edges. You do want to make sure that you use plenty of spray because you do want that cupcake to come out nice and seamlessly at the end. Secondly, we're going to be filling with our cupcake batter. I like to use a spoon just to spoon that in so that I don't get too much batter up the sides of the giant cupcake case. Now you want to fill these to approximately two-thirds full. You don't want to fill them all the way because we want to give them a little bit of space to rise. So that's about two-thirds full. If it's a little higher, a little lower, it's not a problem because we will be doing some carving in our next tutorial to get that cup, giant cupcake absolutely perfect. There we go, both of those containers are approximately two-thirds full. I'm going to place the silicone, the silicone cupcake cases, onto this baking tray. If you've got one of the non-stick stainless, you don't necessarily need the baking tray, but I find this just stops me from actually moving the, uh, the outsides of the cupcake case when I go to check them in the oven, when I put them in the oven, it just helps them to have a flat surface to hold their shape. Those are going to go into a preheated moderate oven of 175 degrees Celsius for approximately 40 to 50 minutes. Now as we're baking these, I'm going to be checking them with a skewer. When a skewer comes out clean in the middle of the cupcake, that's when you know that it's cooked. Generally the top half is going to cook just a little bit faster than the bottom half. Another reason that I like to use the silicone mould, the uh, stainless mould is in one large piece so you can't take one half out when it's cooked and leave the other half in to go a little bit longer. So this top half here will generally take about 40 minutes, the bottom half 45 to 50 minutes. Let's pop those in the oven. All right here we have our freshly baked giant cupcake. Came out of the oven approximately 30 minutes ago. I have left that to sit in the silicone pan. I like to let it sit for at least 30 minutes after it's been baked. Just helps to solidify those edges and firm them up. If you do try to take it out of the patty pan while it is still very hot and very fresh, apart from being very hot, it has a tendency to break up um, as you pull it out of, the, out of the pan. Now to get started on extracting the cupcake, which is always the nerve wracking part, I'm going to start just by loosening the silicone around the edges of the cupcake, just pulling it away. This is another one of the benefits of using the silicone rather than the metal. Obviously the metal is not as flexible. All right, I'm going to do that with both halves. Just pull it away at the edges to give it a good start. I'll start with the base. To get the base out, I'm just going to roll these edges down, similar to what we did with our giant patty pan. Now I will mention, if you do have some little bits that are sticking, don't worry too much, you'll see here there's a few little bits, don't worry too much about that. We are going to do some carving of this cupcake, 
So it will look a little bit neater once we've got it all carved up. There's the base. You can see that's held its shape quite neatly. And now for the top, the same principle applies. We're just going to roll those edges down nice and slowly. There's no hurry. The top will tend to stick just a little bit more. You can see there to the inside, but that's not a problem. I'm going to flip that upside down and just continue to just peel that off. There we go. Okay. Now as you can see here, as I mentioned, we've got a few little gaps, absolutely nothing to worry about. I should also mention in the cooking process, you'll notice that our tops are quite well done. Very common with a giant cupcake and nothing to worry about as we will be carving away any crispy edges in our next tutorial. I'm going to let those cool completely now. They'll take two to three hours to cool all the way through. If you'd like to join us for the next part of our giant cupcake basics, we'll be learning how to carve and layer the giant cupcake and how to pop it into that giant patty pan and crumb coat it ready for decoration. Thank you for watching.